We have had some very wonderful speakers thus far this year, and we look forward to, the, to a wonderful program tonight. As I look out here, I am um, seeing the crowd. I, I see quite a few of you that are vying for perfect history space attendance, <laughs> which is very commendable. What the reward is for this perfect attendance, I'm not quite sure. But, um, oh yes, I do know. It's another great program. <laughs> With that in mind, here is Paul Burton.
he said, no, I'll pre he'll prevent me from things I should not say. So that's probably uh, uh, better. Well, thank uh, everyone for coming. I uh, certainly appreciate it. And uh, anybody know what period uh, this was in, in uh, our world? The Silurian period. Now, how would that uh, relate to farming? It's extremely important. Without the Silurian period, uh, which was the age of corals and uh, many other creatures, we would not have limestone. The most important mineral in the world, limestone, and extremely important to uh, Dora County. I brought a few of the uh, uh, items that were part of the uh, Silurian period, the brachiopod, uh, and because of the age of corals, a couple of uh, uh, corals. But seeing those reminds me, I was going to ask if Al Schneider was here. He's not here? Well, that's too bad. And how many of you know Al, the geologist? Well, all I know about geology, I learned from Al in 10 hour sessions. <laughs> Oops, I almost forgot. <laughs> The, the next period is, is just as uh, important in our uh, natural, uh, uh, natural history of the world, the Ice Age. Without the Ice Age, we wouldn't have the Great Lake, for one thing. <laughs> we wouldn't have all those fine glacial uh, features. Uh, we uh, wouldn't have uh, this a piece of, of uh, drift copper. And uh, somebody was uh, concerned about the, the period. Uh, and I, I said that the, the uh, Silurian period was 225 million years ago. I could have started with this 5 billion years ago. <laughs> and we got something that's almost that old. And I thought of that when uh, I uh, mentioned uh, Al Schneider, he uh, wrote something about the official state rock. Uh, the, uh, anybody know what the official state rock is? Uh, ruby, red, uh, granite. And I should mention, too, uh, uh, going back to the other slide, what is the official state fossil? Who knows? Pardon? No, well, that's a good guess, but it isn't right. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody know? If, if somebody knows, you get a brachiopod. No one knows? Oh, gosh. Well, I'll have to keep it. <laughs> the trilobite is, tri is for three. Lobe is for body and eye is for family. It's a three a lobe body, the, the trilobite. There's a, a museum in uh, Kenosha that has a, a wonderful uh, display of, of trilobite. Then without uh, the uh, Ice Age, we wouldn't have all those uh, wonderful uh, erratic rocks, including the, the granites and many others. Oops, there it is. You're ahead of me. Ruth thinks I'm not moving. I better. <laughs> I forgot to back check my watch. OK. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> anyway, lime kiln. This is why it's important. Uh, the Silurian period was especially important to farming. Uh, there were dozens of, of lime kilns in Dora County and in every farming area. Uh, the lime was so-called burned. Then it was uh, a slack to get uh, the setting agent for mortar and uh, concrete uh, for whitewashing barns. 
uh, even uh, homes, uh, they had a, uh, they added salt uh, to the uh, mixture and used that as, as paint. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, what they call a mixed kiln. The uh, uh, kindling was put at the bottom, was put a layer of uh, uh, wood on it and some uh, rocks and uh, filled up the entire kiln and the uh, lime was, was so-called burned. But without that, we would have had a difficult time, in, especially in, in Door County, because they needed the, uh, the lime for the uh, long buildings and also, of course, for uh, the, uh, all the other uh, uses that were necessary for uh, uh, the use of uh, calcium hydroxide. This is the uh, a home of the first uh, pioneer in uh, Sevastopol, uh, George Bassford. Six people lived in that home starting in 1856. And uh, George came to uh, this country from the uh, UK because the shipping companies advertised that sugar grew on trees <laughs> in America. So he, he came uh, to, uh, to Door County and uh, had a maple syrup operation. This happened to be one of his buckets from the 1860s. It was found under a, a piece of sheet metal near his sugar shack in uh, uh, the woods behind their uh, building. This is the uh, kind of uh, spile that they used. And he didn't use this, but anybody know what, what this is in relation to a maple syrup? An Indian maca. And uh, the Native Americans used these by the, the hundreds. And George was certainly a, an entrepreneur. This was the, uh, the halfway house that he built after uh, he uh, uh, left the log cabin. It was on the, at the intersection with his now P and, uh, high, and 42. But uh, people traveling from the north to the uh, south or south to north uh, stopped here, left their uh, cattle and, and horses in a barn that you'll see in a minute. And he charged for the, the, the food and feed, but not the uh, housing of the, the cattle. The cattle and horses were housed in that uh, uh, building. This is a shot of a, a, another real uh, a pioneer, oops, good night, uh, Joseph uh, Zettel. And this is what uh, was said about Joseph Zettel in the, in the uh, commemorative biographical record of the counties of Brown, Kewanee, and Dora, Wisconsin, published in 1895. It pays tribute to Joseph Zettel. Among the men of Mark and the noble army of pioneers of this section of the state, there is no name more deserving of being perpetuated in a page of this biographical record than that of Joseph Settle. And this was his uh, farm in, uh, Where is it? It, it's at the, near the intersection uh, of uh, 57 and 42. It's the first farm on, on Highway 57 on the left side as you're going north. Well, that's the, the uh, Zettel family. And that building, as you'll see that in a minute. Do you know what uh, that was? A fruit cellar. 
and that's where he started his apples. In fact, in, uh, in a, at the World's Fair of 1893, uh, he had exhibited the finest uh, selection of 20 varieties of apples in the world. So he really was a, a, a true uh, pioneer farmer and, and orchardman. There's no person who has contributed more to agriculture than any other person, or who contributed. Yes, it was Luther Burbank. The variety of zucchini type, summer squash, gold rush is a good example. The miracle, the miracle plant breeders have produced using the principles and procedures developed by Luther Burbank. He was truly a partner with nature in working to produce superior plant varieties. He produced 1,200 different plant varieties. And uh, it's amazing that there were uh, uh, four contempor contempor uh, contemporaries who were friends. Edison, Ford, Goodyear, and Luther Burbank were all all friends. Uh, Burbank's uh, farm uh, was in Sevastopol, California. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's where he did all his work. And he always did all his work in a coat and, 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 uh, and, and tie. Who knows what, anybody here know Greek? Greek, the Greek language. No? Well, that's too bad. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, the Sevastopol on the Black Sea was founded by the, the Greeks many years ago. And uh, Sevastopol is Greek for a, a place of glory. And I suspect that that's one reason that Luther Burbank uh, uh, started that, that farm at, at Sevastopol was because it was a, a, a place of, of glory. There's the zucchini, uh, and we, uh, not a good example, because for some reason it's got a blight. David, what kind of blight is that? Would you know? <laughs> I don't understand it right now. I don't, I didn't work with it. It, it, it don't know. <laughs> not related to wheat, but anyway, it sort of uh, collapsed, all right? Here is a, 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 a real good example of a diversified pioneer farmer, the Hensel farm that uh, was founded in, in uh, 1902, a, a dairy farm. And uh, and this is what that farm looks like today. And it's really diversified. It's probably one of the most diversified farms in Wisconsin, a, a beautiful uh, farm. They have dairy cattle, uh, hogs, uh, cherry orange, a sawmill. They, they produce uh, a lot of maple syrup and a uh, field crop. So that's a, a, a good example of the uh, a well diversified, beautiful uh, farm. And that happens to be in the town of Egg Harbor. And it's at the intersection of Country View and, and Town Line Road. How many of you have seen this uh, farm? Excuse me, I'll get a drink of water. In the, the days that a farm like this operated, up there, they, you know, they had neighborhood built uh, bulls, and that would be moved from farm to farm. This is what they 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 used bull blinders, <laughs> and of course they'd put a ring in the nose of the bull, and use a uh, a staff, 
and then put my blinders on the on the bull, so he wouldn't be a bull wouldn't be attracted to a pretty heifer. <laughs> How am I doing time wise, Ruth? You're the timekeeper. <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. Cool. One of, of the uh, uh, challenges uh, uh, for pioneers was cl clearing land, especially stumps. And this is a, a, a stump puller that was used for one of the big stumps. And that was uh, a real uh, challenge to use. It would be a tip over and there were eyes and then would be moved from one side to another and then uh, set up. A power sweep. Uh, that was uh, used, I think we have a next slide I think shows how that was used. I have a picture, I thought I had one on the, there. we don't have one on the, well, well, Anyway, that was, <laughs> well, we won't use it. I thought we had, okay. That's <laughs> Pardon? Oh, it was used uh, for, th that was a, a power takeoff. The cattle, uh, horses were attached to those arms, yeah. and then that would be a, either attached to a, a, a threshing machine or something else that, that needed power. In fact, at the uh, uh, Sevastopol uh, antique uh, powered uh, days uh, near uh, Valmy, they have a, a fellow who brings a, a small power sweep with uh, uh, some uh, donkeys or, or horses to power it. But that's how they, uh, especially the stretching machines were used use the power sweep. The Peninsula Experiment Station was uh, founded in 1922 and Bob you asked me when they started the first, planted the first cherry trees and I told you uh, uh, 1922 I was wrong. <laughs> it was 1896 when they planted the, the first uh, uh, cherry trees in, in uh, Dora County. The uh, Peninsula Experiment Station is also the home for uh, uh, the uh, USDA uh, Genetic Potato Gem uh, uh, Potato Germ Bank. It's the largest potato germ bank in the world. And what vegetable has the potential of uh, eliminating hunger in, hunger in the world? Anybody know? P potato. I have a, a collection of, of potatoes here. <laughs> I don't. I, I I don't think you see them. You might like to take a look. Every color imaginable. I think it would take too long, but uh, that's a good example of the kind of uh, genetics that they use in uh, producing the potato varieties. Here's a, uh, this is the uh, plaque in front of the uh, experiment station. It tells about the uh, Joseph Zettel again. And, and the, uh, cherry tree. This is uh, amazing. This, this is a Montmorency. That was a, a variety that was planted in 1896. And it's still planted today. Now, in the case of most fruit and vegetable, there are many varieties that have been developed over the years, usually improved varieties. However, the Montmorency cherry is still the same 
cherry, they, we used to call them sour cherries. Now the fruit growers don't like that term. It's tart, uh, tart cherry. But uh, this, they, they, and of course, they probably they will send a, a almost uh, have a, a record cherry crop this year. Last year it was a almost a total uh, failure. But the uh, Montmorency cherry, and there, there are some other varieties that have been uh, developed, and some foreign varieties. Ballon is a one that uh, Bell variety. Some have been. Uh, planning those, they are a little later, but apparently they haven't been as popular as the Montmorency. Silos. Uh, this is the uh, silo that was in the, the ash barn in the town of Sevastopol. It was built in the barn, and that was quite uh, common. And uh, today, that would have enough. Uh, Silage for one uh, day with a, for a big herd of cattle. This is what the uh, silos look like uh, today. A, the uh, A.O. Smith and the other. Uh, windmill. Some. Many years ago, uh, people ridiculed the, 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 the windmill. They said that it was old fashioned and uh, the, uh, many of the farms today have either the, the windmill or, or at least the uh, stand, standard for the uh, windmill. But of course windmills today have again become popular as uh, power generators. A uh, pardon? For water? For, yes, thank you. Windmills, their, their primary use was for, for pumping water. And uh, no, it, it, uh, these were never used to uh, generate power, but they were just strictly used for, uh, and today many of them are, are used in the West particularly, uh, where they don't have uh, power. The model. Ford. <laughs> the Ford dealers don't like to have me say that was the last good Ford built. <laughs> but but uh, that was extremely uh, important to agriculture. It had all the agents for uh, bell power. They jacked them up and used them for bell power, and of course, uh, used them uh, for transportation and for uh, uh, as a uh, farm. This happened to be a 1923 uh, uh, Model T. They were built, the first were built in 1908 through 1926, and in the 27, uh, there wasn't a model, but a few were, were uh, built in 1927. That's a land wheel. Anybody know what a land wheel is? And how it was used at the sur gone off yet. The mic doesn't work. Mike doesn't work? Or you don't talk well enough. Oh, okay. No, he'll fix it. You're working. Oh, okay. I'll talk a little louder. This is a land wheel. This is one rod in circumference and was used by surveyors. Oh. Had a counter on it. Can you imagine doing the surveying uh, with that, pushing that? And the surveyors did a, a remarkable job in uh, uh, surveying. And another uh, piece of, uh, another piece of uh, equipment that they used was a surveyor's chain. Anybody ever see a surveyor's chain? They, they use uh, those. And uh, it's remarkable the, the work that they could, uh, could do. Occasionally you find where there have been errors, where they have offset and, and highways there's a, a, a at, on the, at the intersection of uh, Matthew Road and uh, uh, the Town Line Road. There's a, an offset, 
but that's when they uh, uh, made errors and they had to correct the errors. Those were range lines, so they had to move them 100 yards or whatever <coughs> it might be because of the uh, error. Anybody know what that is? That's a wind generator. I always thought it was W-I-N-D, it's W-I-N. Sorry, that was used to generate electric power on the farm, but it was pr used primarily to charge uh, batteries. It was a, it was a six volt uh, uh, wind generator, but they're quite uh, popular uh, on, on farms of yesteryear. If, if they raised uh, chickens like uh, in this way, how much would a dozen eggs cost? But this is a, a good example of a, of a, of a clock, clock hut. And at the farm, that's extremely popular. Children just enjoy watching the, uh, the, the chicks. That's a clock. There's a uh, sugar shack uh, at the farm. This is a. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, this is a, uh, a replica of the hundreds of sugar shacks that uh, once existed in uh, uh, Wisconsin. It has a, a, an arch, a tool firebox uh, arch. And this was a, uh, a, a improved uh, model of a a Ford tractor as a as a Ford, as a Ford a Ford uh, car it was uh, they Ford developed the Fordson tractor. This is a, a Ford tractor. Fordson. Anybody ever drive a Fordson? Ruth, you did. <laughs> they call it, some call them growlers because they had a, a, a transmission. That really made a, a lot of noise. When did they start using them? Uh, the Fordsons? When I did they start using them? Uh, yes, I was just trying to think. For, uh, probably about 1930 is when they first. Uh, <laughs> it was sometime, and about nine, or in the 1930s is when they had the first Fordson tractors. There's a, um, another way in which they, uh, they powered their threshing machines with, with a, uh, a horse treadle. Can you imagine operating a threshing machine in, in that way? That's a treadmill, yes. Thank you. That's it. And then uh, one thing I wanted to point out was this plant. Anybody know what it is? It's extremely uh, important. Alfalfa. And uh, without alfalfa, I think that uh, milk would probably be $20 a quart because that's the source of uh, protein. And that's a uh, uh, plant of the Middle East. Uh, uh, from Arabia, and uh, the alfalfa is a, an, an uh, Arabic for father of all food, and that's tr uh, truly what it is. I'm certain that our farms today, especially the dairy farm, without alfalfa would, and would be in uh, economic uh, stress. 
In fact, some are this uh, year in uh, some other what a million acres of alfalfa in Wisconsin uh, didn't survive the, the the winter. Are there any uh, any questions? Yeah, how many uh, dairy farms are left in Illinois? Yeah. <laughs> I know how many farms there are left. There are 854, and I suppose about a half of those. I asked them; they hadn't, uh, they didn't uh, have that uh, information immediately at hand at the exchange. But I would think that probably about uh, three or four hundred are still uh, in, ex in existence in, in Door County. But there are 854 farms. Uh, what a, a, a definition of a farm of, of a farm is if it is a uh, operation that produces more than one hundred dollars, oh, uh, one thousand dollars. I'm sorry, a thousand dollars worth of, of of product would be the yes, sir. You mean the, the yellow leaf? Yes. Yes, that's a, 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 a common uh, fungus, disease, fungal disease. And, and, and it's uh, very, it uh, can be fatal to the tree if it is affected and, and consecutive. Even this year, with part of the tree uh, leaves being uh, uh, yellowed and, and dying. Uh, and, and it's uh, especially uh, true in a year like this when we got a lot of small showers. They wet the uh, tree. Maybe David, maybe you know more about the yellow leaf. Well, is it a fungus? I was wondering if it might be a virus. I didn't get a chance to look at the leaves. Oh. But usually yellow leaves is a virus. Yeah. Oh, it's a virus. I think it's a virus. Yeah, it is. You're right. It's it's a, it's a virus. It is not a fungus. It's a. The, the, uh, are the amount of cherries? Mm -hmm. Well, they, they uh, uh, predict the uh, crop, uh, crop this year to be at a little over 9 million uh, pounds. But they said that they always try to keep the estimate down because that affects the price. If they have the price too high or the estimate too high, the, the price is affected. Last year, there was a little over a bit. Pardon? Oh, fun! I'm sorry. Oh, a lot of pesticides. What chemicals? Oh, pesticides. Yes, they definitely, with, without some type of, of uh, fungicide, the virus uh, would uh, affect the crop. In fact, it, it will eventually kill the tree. I think you spray about four or five times a year. Yeah. Still yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, so it's unfortunate that we have to uh, use biocides of one kind of, but there is no alternative. And the, the, the yellow, cherry leaf, cherry, uh, yellow leaf would be an example, very definitely. Yes, sir. What did the farmers put in their silage? Silage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, yes, it, it, most of it is silage. It's either corn or an, uh, grass silage, or sometimes they put in high moisture corn to the, the, the kernel of the corn or put into the, uh, the silage, but it, it's uh, uh, fermented to a, a degree, consumes the oxygen, and, that, uh, and then it also turns a little on the acid side and that preserves it. But a, a lot of the uh, silos now are Sausages, they're uh, horizontal silos. Uh, they, uh, the, uh, uh, 
one of the most popular silos over the years was the A.O. Smith uh, silo. And uh, that was uh, produced because A.O. Smith developed a process of uh, adhering glass to steel. And that is what they lined those uh, silos with, the A.O. Smith. And those were all self-unloaders. They had a self-unloading uh, mechanism in them. Carl? Yes? Why didn't you go into farming? It's <laughs> yeah, a good question. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I guess the farm wasn't large enough. And, and I was very interested in, uh, in, in farming, of course, so I became a vocational ag teacher. Instead of farming myself, I tried to tell others how to do, how to farm. <laughs> <laughs> and that's very interesting. I was, a, 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 in my time, was a Smith's Youth Act. And as a Vo Ag teacher, I had adult and young farmer classes. Anyway, here I was a 23-year-old fellow trying to tell these experienced farmers how to farm, but I, <laughs> but I did survive. <laughs> yeah. Nancy. Did they do that on Honeycrisp that's developed up here? The Honeycrisp apples? Yeah. No. It's developed up here. No, I don't. I, let's see. The Honeycrisp, I, it might have been in Minnesota. Oh, that's Minnesota. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so was the new one. Yeah. And so was the new one, yes. And then the, uh, that's uh, interesting. The, uh, what, what is the Japanese apple? <laughs> Fuji. The Fuji apple was developed at the Morioka College of Agriculture and Forestry. And I was there. I didn't help develop the Fuji apple, <laughs> but uh, I was uh, there in, in uh, service and was assigned to the, uh, uh, I was the military representative in the college's library. And then some years ago, uh, Jim Wood was telling me, Jim Wood from Wind Orchard was uh, going to Morioka, to the Morioka College of Agriculture and Forestry because of their apple breeding program. And he traveled there to northern Honshu, Honshu, Japan. Yes, uh, ma'am. Oh, <laughs> almost virtually impossible, unless they inherit it, made part of a, a family farm, almost impossible. The investment in itself was great. And uh, not only the, in machinery, but the, the land. The, I know that um, uh, agricultural land now is as much as $8,000 an acre. Yes, sir. Uh, sir. Are there crops that are being grown here or can be grown here now that could not be 50, 100 years ago? And also things that were planted then which are no longer suited to the to the new climate? Or, or is there a new climate? Uh, see, I'm trying to think of what uh, they grow today. Most of the, excuse me, I'll get a drink of water. Uh, uh, I know that there are some, some are, are trying to grow uh, hops for the uh, brewing uh, industry, but other than that, uh, they, uh, they have pl uh, planted, planted some rape occasionally, which is, uh, and that uh, hasn't been very successful. Oh yes, and peas, and I brought uh, some peas along. They, be, uh, during uh, the 1800s, they uh, raised peas. In fact, they had a pea cannery uh, in uh, Georgian uh, Bay, but they developed some, I don't know if it was the uh, aphids or was it the disease, David, would you know? But any, maybe it was a combination of things, but then the pea uh, uh, growing uh, left the county, and they, they grew uh, wheat. 
Oh. And now, right now, they're going. I brought a whole bag of of, uh, of canning. Or now it used to be canning peas. Now they're uh, freezing peas, and they're they're late varieties. I brought those as as a treat, a new, good nutritional treat. Are some are going like that's right? There are some. Uh, come on. I'm trying to think what other things. Uh, Wheat, yes. I, did I forget? I may. I did. I, I mentioned that this was a uh, statement. I, excuse me, from George Bansford. In, very interesting. This was uh, 150 years ago, August 9, 1962. George Bansford, Sevastopol, who in less than five years has carved out of the a model farm in Door County. He says that he will match his crop of winter wheat against the entire state. <laughs> but this is 1960, 1862, I'm sorry. But this was in the advocate on August 11, 2012. That's George uh, Bassford. And so he really was an entrepreneur. He had everything going. <laughs> One more question. Okay. There's more wheat going in. Yeah, the reason they don't raise sunflowers anymore is they, uh, one year it's fine, but the second year they develop some type of, of uh, it's, it's a fungus. And we have a climate that uh, is uh, very conducive to uh, that type of, of fungus, so that's why uh, they cannot uh, raise them uh, uh, in consecutive or even uh, th for three years. But they, there are some still raised at a seed company, a bird seed company in uh, Algoma, contract with farmers to raise uh, sunflowers, but they have to move them around. And that's true of the peas, too, the, the so-called freezing peas. Uh, they, uh, there has to be a five-year rotation. You may not uh, plant peas in consecutive year, that has to be five years because of a root rot. And and that's why the uh, pea growers are uh, growing, it moves around the county and around the state to a degree. However, Door County is ideal for uh, raising uh, so-called freezing peas. Carl, thank you very much for- You're very welcome. Uh, <laughs> obstreperous group and I thought maybe yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no I know thank you you've been a uh, very a good uh, uh, group <laughs> oh thank you everyone I appreciate being here